Okay, I'd like to bring this meeting to order uh, with the town of Brunswick. Well, this is the planning board and a joint uh, public hearing and a special meeting of the ZBA. So uh, would everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Before we start with the uh, public hearing, um, we, I am going to open up the regular meeting of the planning board uh, for, um, for tonight. And then I'm going to turn over the uh, the floor to uh, Chairman uh, Ann Clementi of the ZBA to open up her meeting. Ann, you want to open up your meeting? Oh, now? certainly, great. Okay. So we'll, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Brunswick open up the special meeting. It's a public hearing uh, commencing at 7 p.m. Uh, tonight at the Town Hall. Thank you, Ann. Okay, like uh, we had said, this is a, a joint public hearing. After the public hearing, we will have uh, our usual meeting for the for June 17th, our business meeting, uh, meeting the planning board. And after that, uh, the zoning board can adjourn their meeting, special meeting. So in notice of public hearing, uh, I'm going to have Attorney Gilchrist, read the notice of public hearing. Uh, notice of joint public hearing. Notice is hereby given that a joint public hearing will be held by the Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Brunswick at 7 p.m. on Thursday, June 17, 2021, at the Brunswick Town Hall, 336 Town Office Road, Brunswick, New York, to review the site plan and minor subdivision applications submitted to the Planning Board and the area variance application submitted to the Zoning Board of Appeals by Lord Avenue Property LLC to develop an approximately 50,000 square foot supermarket building, loading dock area, parking, and stormwater facilities on 11.9 acres of property located northwest of the Lord Avenue and Hoosick Road intersection. The application materials are on file at the Brunswick at the Town of Brunswick offices, located at 336 Town Office Road, Brunswick, New York, and are available for inspection during regular business hours. All interested persons will be heard at the public hearing. Uh, this notice was published in the Troy Record, placed on the town sign board, posted on the town website, and mailed to owners of all properties located within 300 feet of the project site. Thank you. Okay, the procedure for the public hearing is as follows. The purpose of the public hearing is to hear concerns, comments, and views from the general public regarding a particular proposal or application. All public hearings are electronically recorded and a written, re written record of the proceedings is generated. The applicant will be required to respond to all concerns and uh, comments made at the public hearing and subsequently the planning board and in this case also the ZBA, will consider all concerns and comments when evaluating the application to ensure that the applicant has addressed all the issues in question. The notice of public hearing has been read. Next, the, the applicant will give a brief pre presentation on the proposal and will provide any updates on the application. Upon completion of the applicant's remarks, the chairman of the planning board will recognize persons from the public, and these individuals be allowed to speak, offer their concerns, comments, and views. Since the proceedings of the public hearing are electronically recorded, it is requested that all applicants step forward uh, and use the mic microphone at the podium. All speakers will give their name and address for the record. 
At this time, I would uh, have the applicant come up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Walt Lippman, MJ Engineering, on uh, behalf of the applicant, Lord Avenue Properties, LLC. Uh, we're here tonight for several things. The first thing is subdivision. Um, this is the Duncan property. It is a total of 87 acres. It also goes on the um, east side of Duncan Lane. We're looking to subdivide this into three lots. One, where the proposed Hannaford supermarket will be going, two, the remaining lands of Duncan, and three will be a portion uh, going to the, the town for Lord Avenue. The proposed project is Hannaford Supermarket, 50,000 square foot facility. It will have a pharmacy drive through and a clink drop off um, area for your uh, recyclables. Uh, the utilities will be coming all coming from Hoosick Road. Water and sewer will be connected on Hoosick Road, bringing it down into the facility. Uh, storm water will be treated on site with a combination of detention and infiltration uh, basins. Uh, parking, uh, required parking is about 198 spots. We're providing 203 uh, parking spaces um, with loading docks in the back. Lord Avenue will be slightly realigned just to allow the uh, truck traffic uh, easier access and easier slope down in to the facility. Uh, we propose landscaping around the perimeter of the site in all, all directions. Um, like I said, utilities will be coming off and the utilities will just be servicing uh, the supermarket lot. The remaining lands of Duncan will not be serviced and the right of way for Lord Avenue obviously will, will, will not be. Um, that's Basically, everything in a, in a nutshell, I know a lot of people had a chance to look at the plans out in the hallway and have seen the submissions that we have had. And we will be here to answer any questions. I'm not sure how the chairman wants to work this. I, I, I know in the past you mentioned that they'll submit their, ask their question and we'll submit in writing uh, back to them. Uh, what Generally, what happens is we hear comments, a written record is made of the comments. You're supplied with those written comments and then required in writing to respond to each one of them. Okay, All right. great. Um, could you just, uh, just for the, uh, the ZBA's benefit, uh, what the uh, variances are that they are, are requesting? Sure. You're requesting? I know this is hard to see. What this is, a, site plan of the building and all these little numbers are the photo metrics for the lighting plan. Um, we are asking for a variance for light pole height of 21 feet. Uh, the town current standard is 15. So we're asking for a six foot increase for the perimeter poles uh, on the parking lot in the back area. Um, keep in mind this site sits low compared to adjacent properties. And what you see with these numbers is all the light provided on this site has to be contained within their property. So no light spillage. So you'll see these numbers that once you hit the property, it's all zeros. You're not allowed to spill any light onto adjacent properties. So it's all contained on the Hannaford site. I have a question for you. Yes. So how far are they raising that up? How far are they raising the ground? And has this study been done the, at the level it's at now, or has they taken into effect? What the proposed elevation would be, yes, which is 413. Finished floor is 413 and a half. It was designed based on the proposed grades, not the existing grades. Okay, Thank you. All set? All right. uh, before I uh, open the meeting to the public, 
I just, for the record, want to acknowledge that the town of Brunswick, through the uh, building department, received two emails uh, from uh, residents in the area uh, with comments on the Hannaford, in particular the Lord Avenue and adjacent neighborhood. And I would like to make those uh, part of the record. Uh, one, they're both dated April 20th, 2021. One is from a Teresa Hemeth at uh, 81 Oneida Avenue. And the second one dated the same date is from uh, Christy and Van Von Hofer, which is 72 Oneida Avenue. If those individuals are here tonight, they're certainly entitled to come up and speak. Uh, but I just wanted these for the record because they were addressed to the town for different issues regarding that. The, uh, the applicant has a copy of these, so he would be responding to those also. Okay, with that being said, I'd like to now open up the floor to anybody who wishes to, yes. Um, I Chuck, do you know what emails they were? I don't know. Do you have a copy? Yeah, well, great. Thank you. I'm sorry. I thought you uh, had received those. No, I know we talked about it at the meetings, but I never got an official okay. copy of the email. Duly noted. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will open up the floor now to uh, our first speaker. Anybody wish to come up and make any comments at this time? Sir? Good evening, Steve Purificato, 10 Lord Avenue. Uh, we are the first house on Lord Avenue as you come down the hill. As you can see, you're basically running Lord Avenue's trucking right into my driveway. Um, so that's my first concern, but a number of others. Has a study been done and approved for traffic on Hoosick Street? It's already a mess. Now you're adding a light and traffic diverted down into that hill. Secondly, the fill, the amount of fill that's gonna to have to be brought in here has an environmental impact study been done because there's gonna be enough dust there to cover the town of Brunswick. They're talking about raising the levels, in my estimations, to thousands of trucks of fill. Where is it coming from? And has a study been done to determine how it's going to impact the neighborhood. Lastly, well, not lastly, I'm sure people have a lot of others. I could think of 25 others, but uh, mainly the lighting impact study. Has that been done? You're talking about spillage. That is a dark field. You put any lumens out there, we're going to see them. My bedroom faces that property and is going to be less than 50 feet away from the lights. Now you want to raise them six feet. So I really have to look at them. So there's no such thing as a zero lumen impact to the neighborhood. There's never been lights there before. You're adding them. You're looking for a variance to raise them so I can't avoid them. There's no foliage or plans for fencing to protect us from them. I, I just and you're basically ruining a neighborhood that my family's lived in for over a hundred years. <laughs> to put in another overpriced supermarket that we need like we need a hole in the head. We have two of them on Hoosick Street right now. I don't know what the reason for a third is. That's between Hannaford and you folks. I could care less. But to put it in that neighborhood is a ridiculous thought. We're going to now deal with traffic instead of what we already deal with over the last 20 years of probably an increase of seven, eight hundred percent, if I were to do the math, of people coming up through Frere Park over Genesee, coming around to miss the Winter Street traffic. Now you're going to be in hundreds of percents more because the people that want to get into Hannaford are not going to come up Hoosick Street. 
They're going to come up Genesee, cut around, and drive right past my house, along with the rest of these neighbors. Now, I really don't care who the Duncans sell the property to. That's their business, and it's their right. But it is also our right to prevent ruining the neighborhood. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Christy Fraunhofer. I wrote the email, 72 Oneida Ave. Um, I agree with everything the gentleman just said, but my concern, of course, is the traffic. Uh, we already have a traffic problem in this Sickaway neighborhood on both sides, on Cooper's Ave side, on our side. We have brought this to the attention of the town way too many times to count. Nothing has happened. This would exasperate the problem to the point where people want to now move. We love our neighborhood. We love our neighbors. We are the heart and soul of Sickaway and Brunswick. We cannot take another gigantic supermarket, super center, fast food. We don't want that. We have expressed it many times over. Nothing to you, sir. Sorry. <laughs> and again, I agree. The Duncans can sell it to whoever they want. But we have to be smart about what is happening to our neighborhoods. My children cannot ride their bikes. They cannot walk our dogs because the traffic is already cutting through our neighborhood at an alarming rate. Everyone knows to cut through our neighborhood. It's very dangerous. So if the town agrees to this project, we need the town to do something about the infrastructure. Hoosick Street and Hoosick Road cannot handle this. They cannot handle, we, there's no way. Thursday afternoon, one o'clock, it's a parking lot. So everyone spills onto Oneida and not Seago and Green, and they are flying through. They don't care. They just sat in traffic for 20 minutes. They're hot, they're mad, they're beeping their horns, and they're running us off of the road. It is incredibly dangerous. So we ask the town, please, please be smart about this. And if you do something, we ask that you please cut off Duncan Lane. Duncan Lane will not be a connection. No more. I've heard from other neighbors that it used to be a private road. We need to reinstate that. We cannot have this as a throughway. It's just, we can't. We have, we have cars that park off to the side. Cars are zooming around. My kids are jumping off to the side of the road. We're screaming at our kids to get off the road. It's nuts. So we need to, if you're going to go through with this, we need to cut off Duncan Lane. It cannot be a pass through anymore. We need to have Otsego and Duncan be cut off. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wish to come up? Hi, my name is Jason Delgazo, 22 at Seagull Avenue, Troy. I have a concern, and forgive me for uh, just treading on uh, Lord Avenue, but my concern is the tr the truck and commercial and construction traffic that might. Sorry. Hello, can you? Have, yeah. So I'm. So I'm concerned with the with the commercial and the con construction traffic that might be going through the areas to the east, 20, you know, Otsego, Green, that might be going through that section of the neighborhood. Currently, we already have Sickway Creamery running their trucks down our down our really narrow road at 30, 40 miles an hour, and basically treating it like it's Hoosick Street. So. It, how do we know that they're going to keep all of the, all of the, all these dump trucks, all of these tractor trailers, all of these delivery trucks, onto Lord Avenue, which is wider, and or are they going to decide we're not going to wait, go all the way to the light? We're going to cut through Otsego like Sickaway Creamery already does. Thank you. Hi, Van Fraunhofer, 7209 Avenue. Um, you know, my, my wife had just uh, uh, very nicely emphasized all the points about the traffic on Hoosick Street. I was unaware of the of the request for an increase in the height of the of the poles for the lighting, and it is absolutely impossible to have zero spillover into our neighborhood. Um, I, I don't know how they did that study, but the light pollution that exists already on Hoosick Street is ridiculous. 
and to have a, a 203 spot parking lot with poles that are higher than already are allowed, the light pollution will be ridiculous. There's no way that that light pollution is not gonna end up in our neighborhood. Um, I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Jennifer Mann, 91 Hill Road. Um, I don't live right in that neighborhood, but my husband takes 45 minutes to an hour every night to get up Hoosick Street. And I am very concerned about the traffic increase. Um, I also am really concerned about the light pollution. This is a rural community. And I wonder if Brunswick could insist that the lighting be dark sky friendly, because I feel like in a rural community, we should be able to see the stars. Um, <laughs> I would also like to know if there was a traffic study done and written plans by traffic engineers, could those be shared publicly? Thank you. Just to clarify something with the applicant, weren't the, tra the uh, traffic studies included in the packet of information available to the public? Yes, oh. they were. All right. And there was a... And just, just to clear uh, a fact here, uh, we requested uh, several meetings ago to have a traffic study done on the neighborhood. It was very hard to do because obviously there hasn't been a light there yet to really judge traffic from and so forth and so on. But they did present a theoretical uh, traffic study on that neighborhood, which is also part of the record. Uh, and the people that had questions on the, on the traffic studies are certainly welcome to look at those uh, tonight, and it's available for the public. Where is that? Where can we find that? Is it? I, be I believe they're right out of the table, right out here. Okay. Is that correct, Jeff? Is it okay if I come up more than once? <laughs> right, because a theoretical, a, theor a theoretical oh, study. On, let, let's just let's just let's just, uh, just clarify one thing before you. Think. We have one copy. Okay, it's in the office. Oh, no, no, we don't have to make a I just want to know where it is for, for the public. Okay. So a traffic study on, on the, the traffic on Hoosick Street is irrelevant to the traffic study in our neighborhood because you don't see the spillover. You have to do a, a traffic study, not a theoretical traffic study. You have to put strips in our neighborhood and see the people, hundreds of cars like per hour travel through our neighborhood to get around Hoosick Street going 40 to 50 miles per hour. They don't stop at the stop signs, right? It took us years to get a stop sign at a deadly intersection. People have died every single year, several times a year at an intersection that we finally got some stop signs at, right? People are not stopping at the stop signs in our neighborhood now and they're they're annoyed because they're they're waiting hours on Hoosick Street and they're driving 45 to 50 miles an hour through a neighborhood where the streets cannot handle that traffic. And a theoretical study of that is not good enough. You need to do an actual traffic study in our neighborhoods and see what is happening to the traffic patterns. It's ridiculous. If you lived in those neighborhoods, you would understand. And so a theoretical study is not sufficient. And a study of traffic on Hoosick Street is not sufficient for the neighborhoods because people are bypassing Hoosick Street because it just can't handle the traffic. We have to be smart about how we develop. I'm pro-business, I'm pro-small business, but these big, gigantic corporations are killing small business. People who would visit the small businesses on Hoosick Street don't because they don't want to deal with the traffic, right? I can't go to the Price Chopper. I live five minutes away from Price Chopper because it takes me a half an hour to get there if I have to drive my car, right? I would love to, 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 to patronize mom and pop shops on Hoosick Street. I really would. And, and less than 100 years ago, Hoosick Street was a dirt road, right? So we have to, I'm, I'm okay with development if we do it in a, in a smart way and a way that we can deal with, with the overflow of the traffic. But we have to do this more intelligently. We have to create a situation where Hoosick Street can handle the traffic. And, you know, 
I understand that if you're a business person on Hoosick Street, you want more traffic. But the people who are traveling on Hoosick Street don't stop at those businesses. I would estimate that 70 to 80 percent of the traffic on Hoosick Street is not patronizing mom and pop small businesses on Hoosick Street. They're coming there for these big supermarkets and they're just on their way through. It's a commuter. Right. And so 70 to 80 percent of that traffic is not patronizing those businesses that we want to stimulate in our community. And so we have to deal with this in a smart way. And I'm pro-business and I understand. And, and I think the Duncan should be able to sell their property to whoever they want. And you should be able to do what you want with your property as long as it doesn't have a negative impact on your neighbors. Right. And a theoretical traffic study is not good enough. And in my neighborhood, you did no traffic study. I know that because I live there. OK. If I can add to that, a traffic study that was done on Lord Avenue, but the strips were put between Tucker and Hoosick Street, which doesn't in any way, shape or form figure out all the people that cut down through Tucker Avenue off of Hoosick Street by the Plum Blossom because you put the strips above it. So hundreds of cars were going through there and you got a theoretical traffic study that says five people went through today because that's not the way they're coming down. Secondarily, you're going to have tractor trailers coming down there in the winter, which is going to endanger my family and my property because if anybody loses control coming down that hill, we already had somebody drug overdose and almost take out half the houses in the front as it was last year. The road can't handle this. Uh, also, the idea, and I apologize, I don't mean to say anything bad about it. I, it. It's a good idea from their side. But killing Duncan's Lane from our side is killing our lifeblood to get the hell out of there. Yeah. We don't use who's Street. So to cut that off to us to solve the problem of Oneida Avenue does not solve our problem. It makes it twice as bad. Now we're forced to go that route and be stuck in that hour traffic. You got to really look at this. This is not a simple, the property's there, we could use another market, build it. This is going to negatively affect people for miles. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify, you said that the traffic study results are out in the lobby? No, I, I misspoke. Uh, after consulting with uh, Mr. Golden, they're in his office in the building department. Can they're those be put on the website, the town website? Thank you. Well, I'm going to I'm going to know for the record, and, and I think most of the public is aware of this. The full application documents are not put on the town website. They are available in hard copy. Um, they're available. And I uh, with all due respect to Mr. Golden, I don't believe it's been the policy or practice of the town to place application documents on the website. But they are available during regular business hours to come in and, and take a look at those. And I know Mr. Golden's very cooperative in making sure they're available for folks to take a look at and make extra copies if you need to. Okay, I got a question about that. Why would documents not be put on a public document not be put on the public website, making it inconvenient that we have to travel up Uzzik Street again to read a document that you obviously don't want us to see? It should be put on the website and all the documents, the Lumen study. The environmental impact study should all be a click away. We live in the 21st century. That's the way it should be done. That's the way it's done in many, 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 many communities. I'm in the in industry of construction and tech, uh, technology. I've never seen documents not put on a website in the last five years. Thank you. Well, not that a response is needed, but that those comments should be addressed to the town board. This is the planning board and the zoning board. They, they simply imp implement the town policy. Those comments, well-placed, should be directed to the town board. I just have a question about the, uh, the, the town rules and the, the laws around the traffic that is allowed in the neighborhoods. Um, 
is the commercial is commercial vehicles allowed in those in the neighborhoods such as Otsego Avenue and uh, the avenues that we spoke about to the to the east of this proposed project? And if not, can we get some enforcement, maybe some signs saying that commercial vehicles are not allowed to go through these neighborhoods? Because it is tight, and these trucks are flying through, and they don't care. We've got even. We've we've spoke yeah we've uh, we've even had problems with some of these guys they they basically just flipped us off saying yeah what are you gonna do to us so is there if and if not can we uh, propose that we can get some kind of uh, legislation to uh, uh, prevent commercial vehicles from going up and down except for local deliveries in those those side streets and that all commercial activity. Has to be has to be resigned to Lord Avenue. I apologize, sir. But also that would that would that would alleviate the whole close it off Duncan Lane. I'd say as a more fair compromise is enforcing no commercial traffic up and down this the the avenue the roads to the east of uh, the proposed project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kathy Betzinger, One Value Drive. Uh, I'm off of North Lake. Uh, since I've moved to my home in 1998, the traffic on North Lake has gotten considerably more intense as the development on Hoosick Street has happened. But this um, concern by the local residents is not, um, it's very common actually in Brunswick. This happens all the time in our community where there's a strip mall that's put next to Planet Fitness before Planet Fitness went in, before this commercial development went in and so on and so on and so on. And the communities all come around and they argue and they you know, try to tell the town what they want and their concerns. Well, in 2013, which was eight years ago, the town we spent, or the taxpayers, many people here, in this room, we're part, participated in the comprehensive plan. It's on the website. Eight years ago, the resident said, the number one complaint is the traffic on Hoosick Street on Route 7. That was the number one complaint. Everybody said that was the biggest complaint. So since then, there's been a strip mall and still, the comprehensive plan has still been sitting there saying, address the problem of the traffic on Hoosick Street. Now, it also says that the, that the participants and the residents of Brunswick wanted commercial development. And they wanted Route 7 to be the corridor for commercial development. So it's really not any of you people sitting here, because none of you are elected officials in front of me right now. The elected officials of this town are the ones who have refused to do a plan, to put a plan together to address the problems on Route 7. They've had eight years. They've never held one meeting. Page after page after page of the comprehensive plan. Work with New York State Department of Transportation, CDTC, the uh, Capital District Transportation Committee, um, in large commercial area, and by the way, it says on page 79 of the comprehensive plan, enlarge the commercial area to increase tax base, which everybody wants to keep our taxes down, but a uh, commercial zone should be one half mile back from Route 7. And now, no, ever, nobody seems to have even read that, and they just continue to ignore it. <laughs> so the town has never... Had take it had one meeting, the, the now not you, the elected officials have never had one meeting to address the real problem, which is Route Seven. So, you know, you do you can keep having these little meetings and trying to, you know, fit this thing in. Oh, and put some trees here and do this and put this here and make a little road so the residents can get back to their homes quicker. And it's really not addressing the problem. Governing is planning. Business, I came from 30 years in private sector, 
planning. There has to be proper planning. And the town has to admit that and has to take into consideration what they paid for, which is this comprehensive plan. I don't know why they're not doing anything about it. So really, the only thing we can do about it is to vote, vote, and vote the people who are elected out. Because unless you get them out, nothing is ever going to change. I'll tell you right now. This is going to go in. You're all going to be miserable. And then you're all going to be flooded because it's not going to be done right. Vote them all out. That's my Thank you. Sir? <clears throat> Sean Seabury, 32 watts you have. Speaking about flooding, all right, I would like to know what, what's going to happen with all this water. All right, I'm, I keep hearing the 100 year flood retention pond. The 100 year flood retention pond is nothing compared to what that field floods. And a, a, a two acre retention pond is not going to stop this water. You're only actually going to make it worse because now most of it's going to be blacktop, and it's not going to, you know, it's not it's not going to perp like it like it does. Uh, I mean, that, that's my biggest concern: being the lowest spot in this area is water. Uh, you know, not to mention that now I get to look out at, at a beautiful twenty six foot foot high. Uh, Street light, you know. I mean, um, I mean, it's water. Where I really need to know what's going going on with this water. As you know, well, you guys may not know, but I took video a couple years ago. We had twelve inch, twelve inch snowstorm, very mild winter, 2019, 2018, 2019. We had nine. 12 inch snowstorm immediately melted. I figured it was 3.5 millions of gallon, gallons of water in that field. 3.5 millions. Somebody here has the video. I sent it to somebody. Bill Bradley, maybe, Mr. Bradley. Uh, this gentleman saw it. Uh, ton of water. Ton of water. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Cecil Duncan, Loveland, Ohio. I am a Duncan, and I appreciate the board listening to both sides. And I want you to know that I am very sympathetic for the traffic, right? I have children. We all have children. And I understand that should be addressed. But what I, excuse me, can I finish, please? Oh, 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 hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Excuse me, sir. Hold on. Let me speak. One person talks at a time. Well, it's a donkey. It's a sure guy. It's a white truck, black truck. Sir, will you please be quiet? If you want to, if you want to speak, you can come up after Mr. Duncan is done. All right. Thank you. So, what I would like the planning board to hear from a Duncan is: for over 100 years, we have farmed that front field. For 100 years, we have fed the community of Brunswick and Troy, New York. For 100 years, and more recently, the Duncans have had complaints about the farm, complaints about the aroma from the cows, complaints about the mud from the tractors on the roads, complaints about the cows getting out into local people's gardens, right? So all of a sudden, the farm was a terrible thing back then. Now we have two elderly gentlemen that have an opportunity to sell their land. They have given their blood, sweat, and tears to that front field and to the community. It was my great-great-grandfather that started farming that land in 1900. All I ask is that we address this from both sides and give us an opportunity to sell this land and help these two gentlemen move on. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, do you want to come up and talk? No, no hold on, hold on. Because your people are speeding 75 miles an hour on a single land. 
Don't tell me that you care about Sir, kids. sir, I'm going to... And that guy in the motorcycle today, you better warn him. I'll be out with a stick on the street tonight, Cecil. And you know who I am, and I know who you are at any time. Any time. Any time, Cecil. Who is that? Who is that guy? Who is it? Who is All right, let's get back to uh, business here. Does anybody else want to uh, make any comments at this time? I do have one final comment. All right. And it is my final comment, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank Cecil for representing his family. That's his prerogative, and it's his job. But I also want to let him know, and the rest of the family, Keith Duncan stood on my front uh, lawn and told me he would never sell it to anything that harmed the neighbors. That's what he said to me. So I know he's not intentionally wanting to harm the neighbors. They should be able to sell their land. There's probably a million things they could sell it to. But this isn't about whether they sell the land. This is about whether a supermarket in that neighborhood can coexist with a 150-year-old neighbor. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Jim, do you want to come up? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Jim Tachik, 387 Brunswick Road. I'm a, uh, I'm a neutral uh, person in, in this. I don't live in the neighborhood. I live on, on Route 2. Okay. It's ironic in the town of Brunswick. My wife and I walk a lot. Right? It's ironic in the town of Brunswick. You got to drive somewhere to walk. And it turns out that your neighborhood is where we go. We walk over there. And I have to say that my wife takes her, her, her safety vest always over there because I have to, I have to verify or my corroborate at least what they're saying about the traffic. There's a lot of traffic going through there and they're going fast. And I don't think they're, they're the people from the neighborhood. Right? But you know, I, I, I keep track of what's, what's going on in, in the town. Uh, and there, there's, there's two expect, well, I have, I have a couple questions. First off is, was the, is the Leon project been approved for the, for the Aldi's? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so you're you're somewhere wrong. You said this is going to be the third supermarket. This is going to be the fourth supermarket. The fourth supermarket. There's a, all these. And there's things. also a Burger King and a Burger right. King fried chicken. Going right. Going in there. Okay. Okay. And fast food. Okay. So, so it's and and then also I I've seen the the uh, the uh, traffic report and uh, the addendum or whatever it was. Okay. And that traffic report is to my reading. I, I did a quick read of it. And it asked how many more cars would go over uh, Genesee Street if there was a light on Lord, Lord at Hoosick. All right. It did not add, it wasn't, the, 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 the task was not to assess how much more traffic could be going through there if these developments were, were uh, fully developed. In other words, if the Aldi's was open, if the fast food was open, if the Hannaford was open, that was not the request of the traffic report. So if you read that closely, that's that's what they're asking for. Okay. But the you know like uh, like electricity, water and cars find the, the path of least resistance. You know if you put more as the people said you put more traffic on Hoosick, you're gonna get a lot more traffic through these neighborhoods. There's it doesn't seem the way it's a way of stopping this or slowing this. Okay, I don't know the what I've seen a lot of. Um, uh, I've observed a lot of traffic going to going to Planet Fitness. I would go to Planet Fitness twice a week for for my fitness training. Okay, and you sit in the in the parking lot at I don't know anywhere between eleven o'clock and two o'clock when I go there, and there's the traffic on Hoosick going east. There was constant stoppage of the traffic, right? Because there's just no place for that, that traffic to go. And if, if you want to see what, if you want a prediction of what this inter, intersection is going to look like, Lord Avenue and um, Hoosick, all you have to do is go down to Lake Avenue tomorrow. Go down to Lake Avenue tomorrow 
at noon, Lake Avenue and Hoosick, and you're going to see exactly what it's what this is. This is a preview of what's going to happen here. The traffic is stopped. The you have a line of cars uh, walk, going at a, a walking tempo up from I don't know how far down the school on on Hoosick, going down into Troy, coming to the light. Uh, I used to go that way to go to Planet Fitness, but I'd be stopped at um, at Hoosick on uh, South Lake, may, trying to make a right hand turn. Yeah, well, the, the traffic jams into the intersection. They get caught in the, in the red light at the intersection. Nobody can make a, a can turn out of uh, Lake on Hoosick. Nobody on uh, uh, Lake Avenue can make turns. It's, it, they're totally locked up. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. Okay. So, I mean, you don't need a, a crystal ball or a, a traffic study to, to predict this. Okay. The, and then, and additionally, you know, when you, if you get the, when, when the Aldi's comes in, you're going to, this is a, uh, this is a, a, a supermarket where people are going to ride the bus to go there. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a low price supermarket. Okay. You're going to have buses. And additionally, which you don't have now, you're going to have buses stopping and allowing passengers on and off. That's going to stop the, the traffic because there are no pull-offs for the buses on, on Hoosick. They stop in the traffic lane. Um, uh, if if you have a a light there, you're going to have you're probably going to have to have a pedestrian's uh, stop a light a, a full four way stop for pedestrians like they have at Lake Avenue and um, and Hoosick. Okay, you're going to have probably have to allow at least a minute for these for the people to cross that road. Right, that's another stoppage you're going to have. The, and in addition, there you have all the, the, the additional traffic on the road from these developments, people who want to go to all of these, people who want to go to the fast food place, people who want to go to Hannaford, right? This is all a building, and it's all building, and it's, it's obviously pretty bad now, and it's going to get worse. Right? I also have uh, water concerns about this. You know, I, I went and looked at the, uh, at the plans very quickly, and I calculated there were about... 200,000 square feet of imper impervious surface for surfaces for water for water drainage. Okay, this is going to drain into about about a 70,000 uh, square foot um, uh, wetland area over in right here. In other words, this is three times the impervious surface is three times the size of this. And I also thought there's a gentleman who, who, who lives over there, near there, where's that water going to go? How could, I, I, is, is this going to be pumped out of there, or are they just waiting for this to, to just drain into the ground? I, I don't know. And then, also, if, you, if when that water does get in there, is that going to elevate the water table? In other words, is this going to cause flooding in people's basements? Right? I don't know. I'm not a hydrologist, but it, uh, it seems like it's got to go somewhere because they, they're going to raise, they're going to do a, a six foot lift on this whole area. So if you've got this, this 200,000 square foot surface, it has to be brought up six feet. Okay. Bear with me, the engineer here, please. You got 1,200,000 cubic feet of material which is 45,000 cubic yards, all right? 10 yards per dump truck, that's 4,500. I was underestimating quite a bit, wasn't I? <laughs> 4,500 trucks, okay, truckloads, okay? How many, I don't know, what, what time scale are they gonna do for the excavation and fill? Uh, I, maybe, I, I just guess two months, okay? I don't know if it's a reasonable uh, guess or not. Two months? 40 working days, okay? That gives you 4,500 divided by 40, I'll give them some leeway, that's 100 trucks a day. And an eight hour work day, that's 12 trucks an hour. That's five, a truck every five minutes has to go in and out of this on the Hoosick Street. I assume they're gonna bring them on Hoosick Street, either there or through the neighborhood. Which, one, which one's it gonna be? Okay, so. You're going to have you're going to have flagmen out there, unless they're going to try to put the light in first 
and bring those trucks in with the light, the trucks will never be able to get out because it's going to be jammed. They're going to have to put flagmen there. The flagmen are going to be attacked by the irate motorists. I'm serious. I think that's going to happen. But as I have, I have an, I have an experimental solution to this. Okay. What we do, you let all these move in, you put the light in. All right. Then you see how it's going. Okay. If it's, if it's, oh, it's doing pretty well. The traffic's flowing well. It hasn't bothered anything. Then you, then you bring, then you do this, this process here for the supermarket. Right. Now that's, that's, that's my, that's my uh, take on this. Right. Uh, now the other thing uh, I noticed at the, at the town meeting last week, they're, they're, there's a, they're, they have a, a deal with the town to do a, uh, extension of sewage, uh, uh, what do we call it? The sewage zone district. District, okay, and and for the supermarket, right? But it's only for the supermarket. Nobody else can use this. You're not going to. I don't. Does Lord Avenue have? Can you no, have sewage? Have okay, all that stuff. So there was a similar. I'm I'm philosophically against this. I think this is a bad idea in, in principle. There was a very similar thing in on, on Sharp Road. With with the water district going on the Sharp Road, the developer was brought was we had, there was extension of a, a water district in there for the houses in this property. Uh, I think there were 15 houses in in, uh, in uh, Brunswick and eight houses in North Greenbush. The houses in North Greenbush got water, but the the people in the area could not tap into that water zone, the water district. And I think that's here. I don't. I think if you're bringing a extending these utilities like that, this this should be offered to everybody in the area. Okay, it's not going to be free. You know, it's not going to be free. They may have. They're going to have to pay for their own hookups and the like. But at least give them an, uh, the opportunity here. All right. And then uh, going back to the earlier uh, the earlier bits about the the development on on uh, Hoosick Street. Uh, I was a member of the the. Uh, the com uh, comprehensive plan committee, as was Russ, as right, as was Mark Sipperly. Uh, I can't remember who else. If I've, if I've missed anyone else, okay. It was as as Kathy said. It, there was there was a, it was the plan, the long term plan was to com uh, zone commercially. Um, uh, What's the, the road uh, from the Loop Road? McChesney. 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 McChesney is, is, is zoned commercial. Okay. And that's, and I, I've brought this up to the town board. Right? We should start putting uh, businesses there. And they say nobody wants to move there. They won't put a business there. It's too far up. Okay. All the town has to do is say, you can't have a business anywhere else. It's simple enough. I know this is not your. Uh, this is not your belly wit. What I would I would suggest to everybody in this room mm -hmm. is come to the next town board meeting. Yes. Yeah. On yes. the second Thursday of the month. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, and just one other thing about the, the, the lighting. You know, on in on, on Brunswick Road, almost every year from November until about April, we have snow on the ground. And the snow reflects a lot of light. We've heard uh, quite a bit now. Come on. Come on. All right. Let me just say one thing. We've heard a lot about, uh, obviously, the traffic, the water issues, possibly with the, the raised elevation, truck traffic there, uh, a, a slew of things we've, we've heard about tonight lights everything like that i i if, if anybody has other things that concern them uh we want to hear those i mean there's in addition to you know what has already been discussed uh we you can come up and say whatever you want but uh and, and you can come up and say duplicate things but we're really trying to get into uh the, the quantity of different issues that you want instead of the, uh, you know, the, the repetitive uh, thing. So if you have anything else that you wish to discuss, 
it, that's relevant to this project. Uh, we'd like to hear them, but uh, go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to make one general comment. So Jennifer Mann, um, 91 Hill Road. Um, I'm very sympathetic to Mr. Duncan's comments, um, and I'm very sorry for the disrespect that you were given. Um, farmers work harder than anybody in our community, and they do deserve a retirement, and often their retirement plan is selling their land. But um, as a community, I feel like we need to come together and come up with a plan because you guys are doing your jobs, so this is more to everybody else. We need to come together before these projects come up and figure out something to do with the farmland because there's just a handful of farms left in town and a lot of them don't have another generation who's gonna take over afterwards. And that's maybe tens of thousands of acres, I don't even know. Um, and we need to come up with what we're gonna do because if we start developing low density residential housing or high density residential housing, that further drives out farms because like Mr. Duncan was saying, People move from the city or the suburbs to the country because they think they want to live in the country. And then they get mad about the smells and the sounds. And I'd like it to stay an agricultural community. I bought one of the town's oldest farms from the Doyle family. We are living our dream life and I'd like to keep living it for the rest of my life and my children's life. So thank you. Kathy Betzinger again. I have a recommendation that um, uh, recently uh, Supervisor Harrington put a moratorium um, uh, to stop apartment uh, apartment complexes. Um, the town board, so if everybody comes to a town board meeting, encourage the town to put a moratorium on any more commercial development, commercial uh, built structures on Route 7 until they address the traffic or at least come up with a plan on Route 7. That at least would be putting the cart before the horse instead of the other way around. Because otherwise you're just, we're just putting band-aids and band-aids on it. And you guys are stuck with trying to figure all this little thing out when really the town board needed to address this on a much bigger planning um, issue. So I think the residents need to come to the town board meeting and address it. And frankly, I have no problem with Hannaford. I actually love Hannaford better than all the other stores. Uh, so I actually like the, uh, that, that, that supermarket. Um, they also treat their workers very carefully. So, <laughs> uh, but I do think they should probably put a moratorium um, until the real problem is addressed. So that's my recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Sir? Okay. My name is Adriano Bongiorno. I live up in uh, Brunswick on uh, Tamarack Road, but I used to live um, and still own a house on um, on uh, Marshland across the street from Our Lady Victory Church. So that street becomes a big cut through like these folks are gonna have um, for Route 7 traffic, people trying to beat the light on um, Lake and Hoosick. So I, I, we had kids, we moved out of there because there, the traffic got so bad that uh, it was dangerous. So uh, that being said, in, Marsh, in Marshland, we had sidewalks. None of those neighborhoods have sidewalks. So, um, you know, that, I think that that just makes it very dangerous for people trying to walk uh, that either live in the, in the um, neighborhood or coming to walk in that neighborhood. Uh, the other thing I would say is uh, regarding the retention pond, uh, you know, if it's built to withstand a hundred year flood, it seems like uh, we're having a hundred year flood every, you know, five to 10 years. So, you know, my concern would be, is that uh, adequate? Is it, is it, you know, up for what we could be facing? Uh, the other thing I would raise is, um, so you guys said you have uh, septic tanks. Do you have well water? No, we have city oh, Okay, city. okay. I mean, it's still, regardless, my concern would be where is this uh, fill coming from? I mean, that's a lot of fill. Um, you know, I don't know what's in it. Uh, I mean, that would be concerning if I lived uh, down there. So that's that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I have a question about a different topic. The zone, the zoning is agricultural commercial. So the property taxes associated with that piece of parcel, with that piece of parcel, uh, what is the, what is, was there a special property tax abasement, abatement as part of this plan? 
that was proposed. What is the property tax situation? Is there going to be a pilot program payment in lieu of tax, or is this going to be uh, fully commercialized or are they going to get, I don't know what the current tax basis on this property, but as a agricultural, it would be, it would be understandable that it's a lower tax base. Is that going to change? That isn't an issue for the planning board. That's an issue for the town board. Oh, I didn't know if that was zoning because it's, because it was zoned. I didn't know if there was a zoning issue. I believe it's zoned commercial. Okay. Thanks. B15. B15. Okay, is there any other uh, comments or questions? I will say one thing that uh, next on our agenda for the planning board, when we, whatever we do decide to do with the public hearing at this point, we are gonna be discussing the Hannaford, with the applicant on certain issues that we have ongoing uh, concerns about. You're welcome to stay and listen to those comments. However, public, if the public hearing is closed, I don't wanna hear anybody wanting to speak or anything like that, because you won't be allowed to speak. You can, you can listen, you can do whatever you want. You're invited to stay and watch what we do. But I I haven't closed a public hearing yet, so if you have something you want to say. Questions about the public comment. Will there be future opportunities? Can you come up and give your name? Yes. You have to come up. Come on up here. Oh. Maybe she could use this one. Okay. Uh, Rebecca Del Hazel, 22 Otsego Ave. Um, I just want to know if there's going to be additional future comment periods, maybe not necessarily public hearing, but with the town meetings and stuff. Are there other times where the public can make comments as we become more educated about the point? That, that has not been determined right now, okay. meaning we can close the public hearing and then there will be no uh, further public hearing or public comments received. Or we could put an extension to receive like seven days of written comments and then that would close the public hearing. Or if you go to a town meeting, they have an open forum. They have an open mic. We do not. Neither does the uh, zoning board. Okay, thank you. We thank handle you. all the comments through the public comments through the public hearings only. Okay. So we haven't we haven't to answer your question thank further. You. We have not decided whether we're going to close the public hearing yet. And I do encourage. I I have forgot the last few times, but I do read your minutes like religiously, like the newspaper. I, I'm nosy, um, but uh, I I would encourage more things being accessible online. Uh, I know it's well, not that far from here, but sometimes it's a pain to come, you know, when, when you're doing your errands or whatever, you just kind of forget about it to come ask for the plans. I do encourage more accessibility online on your website um, for some of the documents. I did see that there was, uh, somebody mentioned before, possibly um, no applications were available online. But I do remember seeing all these stuff because I remember going through and I could see the map and I'm zooming in on everything. So at one point there was some plans and application on there. I learned about Secret and all that. So um, yeah, we are 2021, it would be nice. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this point, uh, the public hearing has extended past an hour. Um, I don't believe there are any other people that wish to speak at this time, is there? Uh, I'd like to now confer with uh, uh, Chairman Clemente as far as whether there's a need to extend a written comment period. So, so I, I queried the numbers and they feel that uh, most of the comments have been said, um, so that no, not to extend at this point. Okay. But the planning board, we can. Okay. Okay, now I'll, I'll refer to the planning board. Is there anyone who wishes uh, to have a written 
uh, period at this time, or have comments been received and you're satisfied with those? Okay. It appears that uh, we are also satisfied with closing the public hearing. But before I do that, I'm going to give everybody an opportunity. If there anybody who wishes to make any additional comments, express any concerns, or anything for the record at this time? Okay, then, on behalf of the planning board, uh, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Turn the floor over to Chairman Kameni. Yep, so I make a motion uh, for the Zoning Board of Appeals to end the special meeting with the Planning Board. And our next regular meeting of business will be on uh, June 21st, commencing at 6 p.m. at the second. Uh, uh, before you do that. Certainly. While the special meeting is still open, the, the Planning Board did approve a motion to close the public hearing. So before the special meetings close, okay. if the zoning board is looking to close their public hearing, you should do that first. So I amend my motion, uh, make a motion to close the public hearing portion of this application for the zoning board. Thank you, all in favor. Aye. And then I make a motion to end the, pub, the special meeting with the planning board. Uh, I have a second. second, thank you, Andy. All in favor? Aye, Aye. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ann. Thank you, members of the uh, zoning board. Thank you, Russ. Thank you for having us. Okay. Uh, just a moment. We'll have uh, the much. zoning board. Thanks, will be leaving. But well, we are going to start our public uh, uh, meeting, our regular meeting of the planning board in a minute or so. You're all welcome to, to stay, as I said before. We had a problem. Yeah, you're still on the agenda. So hang, hang around. Right. No, 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 he can stay. <laughs> Okay, could I have everybody's attention, please? Okay, I'm going to now open the meeting for the planning board of the town of Brunswick for June 17th. This is our normal uh, business meeting. The agenda on our business meeting is as follows. The Lord Avenue property uh, site plan. And I think there's a subdivision now with that. Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. That's number one. Number two, uh, Hildenard. Hilden How do we pronounce that? I believe phonetically it's uh, Hildelund. Okay. <laughs> Waiver of subdivision. And I apologize if that's been butchered, yeah, I, but I, I think it's Hildelund. And then number three, uh, Warrington waiver of subdivision. We also have old business, which is the Atlas Renewables um, Solar, which is the North Troy solar field on Oakwood Avenue. So our first uh, order of a business is to review the minutes of our past meeting on June 3rd, 2021. Is there anyone have any Additions, corrections, or amendments to our minutes? Okay, hearing none, I will make a motion to accept the minutes as they've been submitted. Do I have a second? I'll second. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You just did the minutes. I'm sorry about that. Um, just, we did 
Did you change the address of 845 Hoosick Road to nothing Hoosick Road? 845 Hoosick Road is max BMW. It is the Hoosick, uh, this, um, the what? proposed Harbor Freight is not going to be at 845 Hoosick Road again. So it's just going to be Hoosick Road to scratch 845. Okay. And then uh, <coughs> the, uh, the other one was regarding the um, let's see, there was a front to go on Grange Road. Um, Livingston Street ends at the Troy Line, so the address is, is actually 526 Grange Road. Okay. Okay, how do you want me to handle this, Andy? We'll just note that in, in the record. Uh, All right. You know, we'll, we'll note that I think the application, I got those, the application for um, Harbor Freight, I think the application document noted 845. Yeah, so we'll just note going forward for the record that this is Hoosick Road adjacent to 845. Okay. Um, and then Hild Hildelund, we'll note that when you're reviewing the application tonight. Okay. Chuck, what's the address? Okay, first on our agenda is Lord Avenue address? property, otherwise known as the Hanford. Why don't you uh, come up? Uh, obviously, we've had the public hearing. Uh, public hearing has been closed. Uh, comments have been received. Uh, questions have been taken. Uh, your responsibility at this point is these uh, the minutes of that public hearing will be available to you shortly. Shortly, and then uh, you're required to respond to those. Sure. We receive them, Mr. Cook, uh, via email. We can certainly do that. Great. What will happen is they'll be posted on the town website, but we'll make sure we send them to you. I appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, there was a couple issues that were brought. I mean, obviously the the traffic. Through the neighborhood is uh, is an issue. Um, there are, were two uh, emails received that I made part of the record, which suggested one was to block off Duncan Avenue. The other one was to create a, uh, a one-way section of Lord Road. Uh, those comments were received by the town of Brunswick. They have been since reviewed uh, by the Tom Choppy, the town attorney, uh, Andy Gilchrist, our attorney. And um, there are some issues involved, whether that's uh, the legality of being able to do that, first of all. So that is currently under review. Uh, and uh, do you have anything else to add on that, Andy, at this time? Uh, not at this time. Those issues are still being reviewed uh, under, under the law. Okay. Uh, just so you know that. Um, let's talk about a couple things. Um, uh, one of the concerns, in addition to the traffic, was the uh, drainage, so forth and so on. Uh, Wayne, you've had an opportunity to... Uh, uh, evaluate that stormwater management uh, situation? Uh, certainly. Would you yeah. like to make some comments on that at this time? Um, as Walt would probably agree, it's a difficult site. Um, it's got some complexities uh, based on the drainage area and, um, and, and it was not an easy hydraulic model. Um, we, we have been back and forth several times. Um, we've um, had a couple of, we've made comments on it a couple of times. We commented, he brought it back. We commented on the second round. Bill Bradley has exhaustively reviewed um, the, the stormwater report and the stormwater design uh, his, in his capacity as this stormwater coordinator for the town. 
Um, we feel that there is a solution and we're still uh, going through some of the calculations to come up with uh, a solution that is both agreeable with, with us and with uh, Bill Bradley and um, certainly uh, MJ has been very uh, involved in working with the town to come up with the best solution for stormwater there. Um, I, some of the numbers that were thrown out there in the public hearing, um, probably not accurate, but um, uh, what, what, what is what is the actual uh, elevation change that you have to make. I thought it was more like four or five feet. It's six feet. Right? It's, 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 it's about six feet. Is it six feet now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, finished floor is four thirteen and a half. And, and you you I did calculate how much there. fill would have to be brought in at one point, right? Yep. That's I think it's in the EAF. Right? It's right around that forty five and fifty thousand. Yeah. Fifty thousand yards? Yep. The trucks hold more like 20 to 25 yards, not 10. Um, so the number of truck traffic that was kind of identified, the 10 probably, is concrete. probably a little low. Yeah. Or the number yeah, the, of trucks is probably a little more than what is actual. Um, it was anticipated about a three to four week process. Yeah. Um, and as we discussed before, uh, all this traffic will be exiting and entering on whose extreme? None Correct. of it goes through. Correct, and they'll all be right-hand turns, a right-hand turn off of Hoosick down Lord, and then as you're leaving Lord, a right-hand turn onto 7, uh, Troop 40, back to Scattic Oak. Okay. Is where it's planned right now. When you say Scattic Oak, how, is, is it going all the way down to 10th Street and going up Oakwood Avenue, or how's it gonna I go? I don't know where it's going from, from that point. Well, I think goes we- Lord, uh, that, that, that would be good to know. Yeah, that, there is, that, there that, is that a, a weight restriction on North Lake Avenue. I believe it's six tons. It yeah, six. it's pretty pretty low. So heavy trucks would not be allowed on that road. I would assume. Legally. I would assume you, the preliminary contractor for that is probably Fane, if it's out in Scattercook. Is that correct? Um, the applicant is still talking with contractors at this point. Okay. I mean, we, we want to know that, and I think the residents want to know that. Uh, yeah. So that would be one of your responses. That we're yeah. Going to have to come up so with. right now they're currently um, in conversations with a couple different contractors uh, based on the plans to get some prices. And once they have an idea of which way they're going, we can finalize that, the, the truck routing and everything. All right. When do you think you'll know that? Um, I can talk with the applicant. Uh, I would probably say within the next couple of weeks. So bottom line, the stormwater discussion is still ongoing. Um, but I think we're a lot closer than we were a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does anybody on the board have any questions that may have come up? as a result of the public hearing. There was, a, there was a comment about the location of the uh, trip sensors for the um, traffic study. Yes. I think we should look at that to make sure that, you know, we're comfortable that we're catching adequate locations of where traffic is coming through that community. Mm -hmm. I think that was a good point that was brought up that we need to address, at least look at, but we're comfortable with the- Yeah, I think, I think particularly Tucker was one spot where they um, said that they would probably capture more traffic if they had moved the counters. Um, I don't know if they used counters on uh, Genesee when they did that study of North Lake and Genesee yep. Street. I believe they did. Mr. Chairman, I want to bring Wendy Holzberger. She's a VHB. Hi, Wendy Holzberger, VHB. So to answer the question, the counter that was put down um, at the project site, the most that was basically 
for to capture speed to do the site distance analysis at the proposed driveway. The, the main portion of the analysis was done with the offsite intersections along Hoosick between Hillcrest and McChesney. And all those were physical counts that were done during the peak hours, you know, turning movement counts that captured, you know, vehicles, heavy vehicles. That's what was used in the analysis. When we did the study in the Genesee neighborhood, we actually used a recent study that Creighton Manning had completed um, that provided the data that, of the volumes that were coming in and out of that, of that neighborhood street. But that study was only for the intersection of North Lake and Genesee. Right. Not, so and it didn't pick up Oneida or the other. Right. It has it had the traffic coming out of Genesee at the North Lake Freer Park intersection. And essentially the traffic that's already in that neighborhood isn't, you know, is existing condition. So what our study actually looked at was if there was a signal, which, you know, just to clarify, the signal's already been approved. The signal really, the signal is not being installed as part of this project. The traffic signal is already approved. So, duly noted. We've yeah, it definitely, it was, there was a lot of connectivity between this project putting in a signal. This project is not putting in the signal. The signal is already going in from another project. So, um, that being said, so what that assessment we were, were doing was, First of all, our study accounted for traffic that would come to and from the supermarket. We had a, a small percentage, essentially a lot of neighborhood traffic, you know, instead of if you lived in those neighborhoods and were going to come to the supermarket, you would, you would, you know, go the back way, right? I mean, that, that makes sense. So that was primarily, but we did look at the bigger picture of if there was a signal there, it would be people on Hoosick that would then, you know, cut around that potentially. So the traffic we looked at was if you were on, you know, North Lake going to Freer Park, if you were in going to that neighborhood, that that kind of loop instead of going or staying, you know, on Hoosick up to North Lake to Freer Park or Freer Park to North Lake to Hoosick, you would potentially turn and use the, the signal to go back and forth and do that. So our assessment looked, you know, it wasn't really as much what's coming on Agenda C at the time. It's really what was on North Lake and Freer Park, and we took a percentage of that and said those that those trips might do that. But again, it's not really a result of this project, um, but we did do that analysis as requested. Let me let me ask you a question. You, you these these traffic counts do take into account uh, heavy vehicles. Is that correct? Correct. So our models put you know do have the heavy vehicles input into them. Yes. I, I would have to assume. From the comments made at the public hearing that the speeding commercial vehicles probably at least over the last 18 months are probably ups fedex um, prime those type of vehicles in addition to the normal service vehicles that you would see uh, in a neighborhood for example an electrician or a, or that type of thing is that is that pretty much what you found? Yeah, so we we didn't do a speed study in that neighborhood, you know, specifically. The speed study that we did was on Lord Avenue to okay. capture the speed because the 85th percentile speed is what we use to um, check the sight lines. Well, I'm, I'm, ta I'm talking about uh, not so much the speed, but the consistency of the traffic. There was a comment made at the public hearing that uh, now they get all kinds of commercial vehicles speeding through there. Um, I'm trying to identify what those commercial vehicles are that are speeding through. Are they dump trucks avoiding, you know, Hoosick Street? Are they, uh, I would have to assume that they're delivery trucks of some sort or service trucks. Right. And, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to step out of bounds a little bit here. <laughs> You were the one that, that brought that up. So let me. Yes. Yeah, it's Could you just tell me quickly what sure. vehicles you're talking about? Mostly tractor trailers and delivery trucks from the same location. That's what they were talking about. Okay. It's the only one that, that's not a traffic problem. Commercial zone. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're you can make that part of the minutes of the review. <laughs> How you want to do that. Um, but I, you know, I. It was, it was mentioned about tractor trailers. And I, I can't imagine like a, you know, like a Walmart's tractor trailer going through there or anything like that. All right. 
but you have to agree with me because I live on the other side of the street of Hoosick Street. And we see, you know, I live off of, uh, uh, of um, Marathon Drive on uh, Ledgestone, but I get the Mellon Avenue and the Coolidge and all that traffic going through. And uh, I understand the increase in delivery trucks over the last year and a half when everybody is. And some of those guys are not slow. Okay? They got to move. So I was wondering if that was part of your, you, you picked that up in the traffic study at all. Yeah, we didn't specifically, like I said, we used the data that was in that Crate Manning study, which yeah. was, that study was done about the four-way stop intersections, that the signs that were put in there. So, and again, we were really focusing on what wasn't in the neighborhood yet that might move to the neighborhood. So we didn't do, a, we didn't spend a lot of time looking at what was already there, because if we're looking at you know, an impact from something else being added into it. That That's really what, you know, our understanding of what we were tasked to do was. Mm -hmm. I'd, be, I'd be curious to see how much of the traffic is coming from, not so much through the park, but out North Lake also. You know, for example, if there was a Hannaford constructed there, would you see uh, an overwhelming increase in traffic from, say, North 40 going to Hannaford? Um, that type of thing. The other larger developments out that way. Just, just I, I don't know if there's any way of really analyzing that. But, so, all right. Does anybody have any other questions on the traffic studies at this point? I have a question. Okay. Um, Wendy, you indicated that uh, it's expected that approximately 10% of the traffic that's currently turning to and from Fur Park Road to Hoosick Road uh, may choose to travel through the neighborhood. And how did you come up with that number? So some of it was look, you know, looking at you know, the volume of traffic that was doing that. So we were a little bit limited with, with that data set, right? So we have that data set and whoever, you know, who's turning in and out of Freer, Freer Park, you know, 100% of them aren't all coming from Hoosick Road, you know, west, east of North Lake Avenue. So some of it was, you know, just an estimate of percentages based on looking at the flow of traffic and our understanding of what, what's happening on, on Hoosick. Yeah, I mean, and, you use available data to figure out what kind of traffic the uh, supermarket is going to generate. Correct. And then from there, you figure out where that traffic is coming from and to. Um, did you take any of that in consideration? Um, how much of that... Uh, generated traffic is going to be coming from anywhere except Hoosier Street. So <laughs> I think I know what you just said. So we did have a percent, like as our study had, you know, a percentage of traffic generated to the back, but also, you know, we also understanding, you know, who's at road want to make sure where, you know, that the, the intersections we analyze in detail on who's at road, right? So we want to like also be conservative and make sure we're analyzing the potential impact to who's at road. Right. I mean, it, there's a lot, there's a lot of st steps into it, but when we looked at that percentage, particularly that you're looking at, I mean, when we look at cut through traffic, I mean, we do a, a lot of studies, too many, but so, you know, we are looking at like the logic of that that cut through. Like, yes, you're on Hoosick. We all know that Hoosick is is slow during the peaks, right? Everybody knows it. I spent a lot of time on Hoosick Road myself. Don't live in the town, but spend a lot of time on Hoosick Road. So you look at that and then you say, okay, if you went through the neighborhood and you're on those narrow streets, and I understand people are saying people are speeding, but logically, when you look at a cut through, there needs to be like something that's attractive to you to do that cut through right. and to like jump off at Lord at Lord Avenue, you know, that loop that we're talking about specific to where the Hannaford is there, you know, you have to really think about what is your time savings 
that you're really getting by doing that cut through going, you know, through several streets of the neighborhood. The four way stop is, you know, a calming mechanism, supposed to be a calming mechanism. The streets are narrow. There's people on the streets. Like we said, there's cars parked on the streets. Duncan is part of it is gravel. So, you know, that circuitous route, does that really get you that much that you're going to start pulling like this significant amount of traffic back? And, and our S that that's where we came up with that estimate, kind of looking at, you know, what we could actually pull off of there, you know, and why they would, would do that. And again, that, that kind of study is really separate and distinct from this project because the cool. signal is going to be there anyway. And we already accounted for the neighborhood traffic in our study. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if it would be worth it to do an O and D study of, of how much traffic now is going down Lord Avenue, going across Duncan's Duncan Lane and through the neighborhood. Then, then you'd have a baseline kind of now of who is making that cut through now. Right, and I mean, just from a volume perspective, so. For the, for the supermarket, we look at PM and Saturday because that's your peak, you know, supermarket peaks. The the study on the great manning volumes were AM and PM because that's more of your full commuter right. traffic. So the PM peak hour overlapped. If you look at the cars that were coming out or in of Genesee Street from that Freer Park North Lake Avenue intersection, there was in the PM peak hour, 191 vehicles, 81 that were leaving Genesee Street and 110 Oh no, I just, I wrote and exit 110 that were coming in, right? So there's 100 plus about in each, 180 to 100 in each direction. And a PM peak hour that we counted at Lord Avenue at Hoosick, there was 15 cars. Yeah. So they're not doing that. They're not doing and that can, right you now. You can do that with street light, right? You can do some kind of origin destination study Right. Uh, just by. Yeah, no, you can't. Computer. Yeah, no, there is. I mean, track license plates, whatever. There's ways to do that. But what I'm saying is at Genesee at North Lake, you have 80 and 100. At Hoosick at Lord Avenue, entering Lord Avenue, there's 15. So you're going to be really busy over on, Lake, on Lord Lake Avenue. There's not, there's, you know, you're, just by looking at that volume comparison itself. It's already indicating that people aren't using, if they're in that neighborhood, I mean, obviously there's a percentage of people that are moving in and out of the neighborhood that live in that neighborhood. That other percentage that's there based on those PM numbers does not match that they're coming, they're using Lord Avenue as that cut through. And maybe they're using something else. You know, I don't know. We, we only, you know, studied certain pieces of it that really are related to, you know, the supermarket. For the most part. So yeah. if I'm understanding what you're saying, if 81 cars go through Freer Park intersection onto Genesee and all of them exited Lord Avenue, that was only 15. But you're estimating that that, that number is much smaller and that's where you came up with 10%. No, no, those, those are two different comparisons. Okay. I'm just saying in general, like people are talking about cutting through the neighborhood yeah. and we're talking about you know, who's cutting, who's avoiding who's street by traveling already in the neighborhood between Lord Avenue and Genesee Street using that, that cut through. Right. And what I'm saying is, you know, when you look at the PM peak hour volumes, like over at North Lake at Genesee Street, and then you look at what's happening at Lord Avenue with Hoosick, there's almost, there's very little traffic on Lord Avenue at Hoosick, you know, compared to, okay. you know, 80 something trips 80 to 100 in each direction and eight and seven in each yeah. direction. I would which say, 10%, I, would, I would say that Otsego is more of a, used more than, than, than Lord Avenue. I come out across from Otsego at Coolidge and tonight I was, there was three cars stacked in back of me. There was one car wanting to turn onto um, Coolidge there was three cars coming out of Otsego at the same time. And we let close to 60 to 70 cars go by before anybody could get in. And then everybody went at one time. You wanted to see a scramble. Right. So I would say, just from my experience over the last years, a couple of years, that Otsego is more of a 
yeah, it's more of a, a right. And effect. I and I think that's part so of the maybe point. maybe you ought to shift it over there a little bit and find out what's going on there because if there's a light, I would have to assume that that Otsego traffic is going to go over to Lord Avenue. Except to get from there to Lord, you have to cross Duncan, which is a partially a gravel road. So you're you're you know there is a percent you are losing some that's of the, your. With all due respect, I lived in Genesis, Genesis Street there for 23 years of my life, and we cut through there right. all the time. That road is more than fine for cutting through. And, and my concern, I'll be honest with you, my concern, that new light, I think, is going to draw, without the Hannaford, a lot of traffic for anybody that's coming south off of North Lake. Because if you've got a light now at the intersection of Hoosick Street in, in North Lake and South Lake, and now you have a light up by, you know, further up by Lord Avenue, I'm, the, I'm not going to sit in the light at Hoosick Street. I might as well cut through Duncan's and sit at the light. At Lord Avenue, because I'm that much closer up up Hoosick Street, but I've been taking Hannaford in, into account. So I think a lot of traffic coming down North Lake going south, just for that light, is going to cut through that neighborhood, right. just to get the benefit of being closer to where they want to go to because of the, the light. And now you have a light to let you out. Yeah. Where else we go, you don't. Yeah. But again, like that, I understand what you're saying, but this project isn't putting the light in. So we're, you know, to, like, as far as the, I understand what you're saying, that the, the I traffic. Understand, but... I understand that completely. And and I hope the, the public knows that, that that light is there. Correct. Hanover's is not. Yes. And obviously so it's a benefit. It's, hard, it's it, Well, it's, it's hard to, it's really hard at this point to really analyze, you know, how much traffic that, that light's going to, you know, grab because, it isn't there yet, and uh, and then you have another project, your project, uh, that obviously is going to add some type more traffic to it. Right. So when I said, you know, like a hypothetical analysis, that's pretty much what we got here. We're trying, we're guessing at it, really. Well, it is and it's not. I mean, there's a lot of standards and there's a yeah, lot well, of practices yeah, that we follow, but, and there's guidelines, and you yeah. know, and and essentially. You know, the Department of Transportation approved that signal at that intersection, looking at the studies that, you know, were done at that. And the Department of Transportation will, you know, look at this intersection, this project as well, and confirm that no additional mitigation needs to be done. You know, there is, you know, widening at, at Lord Avenue at the signal that's proposed as part of this project to, to add more capacity exiting onto Hoosick, but you know, that's part of the process. And it, I mean, it's, I understand it's theoretical to a sense, but it's based on a lot of guidelines and no, standards no, I, I and, and practices that, that we all well, follow. I use the, I use the word follows. hypothetical. I'm sorry. I use that word and, uh, and I was called on it a couple of times during the public hearing. <laughs> so I wanted to make clear that, you know, there, to a certain amount, because the light isn't there yet, you really have no, you don't have a good baseline yet, but Wayne suggested, you know, to do a better baseline further down Lord Avenue and so forth and so on. I didn't realize that people cut over Tucker. Yes, they did. Where do they go in at? Uh, Plum 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 Plum. Plum. Yeah. She said 50 coming down Lord Avenue, there's probably 100 coming down. That's Okay. Right. Well, that's why, that's, that's that's why I'm asking that's why the question right. because yeah. it's been brought up that there's a significant okay. amount of traffic cutting through Tucker down Lord Avenue and then across Duncan Lane. Right. right. So I, we just want to be sure that yep. we're capturing that traffic, and then um, I think it. If it, it shows 100 cars, it's 100 cars. If it's 10 cars, I think that uh, the public needs to know what the data is so that uh, and, and, and it could help your case. It could right. you know, make it a little tougher for you to, to prove your case. But uh, I think that data needs to be identified. And um, um, it, it's something I think you can do through available software to come up yeah no we could i mean yeah i i understand your point but what the comparison i was saying was on this you know the intersection <clears throat> excuse me we studied well, lord and who's it right right and that's right. the volume coming out of there but yeah that's at the who's intersection so yeah it won't capture it anybody cutting yeah, across correct. tucker and going down lord and then back over down. correct it did not you are correct yeah. 
Uh, the other thing, you know, I, I think personally that the traffic coming south on North Lake Avenue, once that other light is in that Lord Avenue, and if this Hanover gets approved, I don't see why anybody would come down north, go up, to, go all the way out, you know, to the intersection of Hoosick Street and North Lake and South Lake, and go through two lights that live basically north of uh, Fir Park like North 40, all the people in North 40 area, why would it come down all the way down to Hoosick Street and go through two lights when they can just simply cut through Lord Avenue and get to Hannaford without going through any lights? I, well, I think- I also, I, I still think we can't let go of some kind of analysis of what to do with Duncan Lane. That's my point. I think you're gonna yeah. have a lot of traffic from North 40 whether, in that area that's gonna cut and avoid two we, lights. We, um, Come up with a solution to make it one way, either for the whole way or a portion of the way, something um, that would help mitigate that cut through traffic. Um, but we have to go through and, and evaluate through through legal means what is allowed to do on a, on a public street. We can't we can't shut it off. It's a, right. it's a public road. Um, but there are certain mini mitigation measures that may be able to be done to, uh, yeah. to help that situation out. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. You're welcome. Is there anything else anybody wishes to discuss at this time regarding the uh, Lord Avenue Hannaford project? You know you're going to be getting your the comments. So, um, moving forward here, as far as uh, our next meeting, um, is any of that information going to be available for our next meeting, or do you want uh, a little bit more time on that? Um, <clears throat> our next meeting is on the first of July. Okay, um, we can ten, we can be on the agenda. Um, I'll have to see once. Um, when would the minutes get announced? Just start with the minutes? Yeah, well, that's, that's difficult to say. Okay. If they, they can take at least a few days, it's going to be well into next week. Okay. Unless, sure. And once we get them, we can start to start. Uh, yeah. okay. okay. So uh, we'll put you tentatively on our agenda for the July 1st meeting. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, Walt, did, did you ever meet with Bill Bradley on the stormwater? Mm -hmm. Again, he was trying to get a meeting between um, our office and him and you, but he never. No, actually, I just spoke with him today. So I was able to get a hold of him. Okay. On a couple, one was uh, sanitary sewer. Oh, I called him. He didn't call me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're and you're I surprised. <laughs> I got to be careful what I'm saying now. I know. It's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube now. These <laughs> meetings are on YouTube, by the way, now. Um, all right, then. I think we're all set for tonight. Thank you. I want to thank everybody in the audience that uh, contributed to the public hearing and so forth and so on. Your comments were duly noted, obviously. Okay, next on our agenda is the Hildenar. Where am I? All right, give us give us the Hildeland. 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 It rolls right off the tongue once you get used to it. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I've been working on this for about 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I finally got the two parties in agreement. Okay. Um, I brought along a copy of the small map that I had prepared to submit to the city of Troy as part of the project. And uh, I was working with James Rath down there at the Troy Planning Commission. And uh, he says, because of the small amount of land that's involved with the city of Troy, that I really don't need to go in front of the commission. I simply need to come before you folks, get your approval, file a map for the county, and file a copy of the map with Troy Engineering. Plan. Um, so I kind of colored up this small copy of the map just to kind of give you guys 
an idea of what's going on because I know it's a little complicated. Uh, Carol Delvin and her husband, who's passed away, originally bought this piece of property in, in uh, 1975, this pink, this pink shaded piece right here. And the piece of property went along where originally the Niagara Mohawk lines were going to run. But then subsequently, Niagara Mohawk decided to reroute that and they put them over here. Um, so then the Hillman property didn't run along next to Niagara, it kind of hung out into the middle of the Calhoun property. Well, everybody was friendly there, and uh, Mr. Hillman wanted to build a big shop, and uh, Mr. Calhoun said, Yeah, no problem, go ahead and build it. You know, we're not worried about uh, cutting hay over in there. And, okay, so here we go. Fast forward, uh, property line goes right through the shop, and Mrs. Hildeland has moved over into uh, High Point. Um, she wants to, she's getting this all cleaned up and wants to sell it, but realizes we've got to get this mess cleaned up before she can sell it. And um, in 2004, she had the opportunity to purchase this little piece of property out here, which is all in the city of Troy. This little tax map parcel, uh, oh, I forget that was the it's the one a point one two acre, yeah, okay, yep, yep. Yeah. And she, so she bought that in 2004, kind of knowing she could use that as a bargaining chip with the Calhoun boys to get done what she needed to get done around the garage. So, here's what we're hoping to do. Um, Mrs. Hildelin is going to convey to the Calhouns uh, 76 feet of frontage, 75 or 76 feet of frontage along Livingston or Grange, depending exactly where you are on the road there, um, so that they have access to this land up in here that's on this side of Nymo. Uh, that property also has frontage all the way up to Plank Road, but having the access right there would make that property just that much more valuable. So she's going to convey this little portion that's in the city of Troy to the Calhoun boys in lieu of getting this triangle back here to, to clean up the issue around the around the garage and shop. And, and also there, she's getting just to draw a straight line there. This very, very small triangle right here from the Calhouns. So, once this is all approved, the, the Hildeland lot will look like this pink shaded area, and the Calhoun property will then come down and go out to Livingston Ave slash Range Road, and then back around. So, it's basically two lot lines. Basically, like, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. How, how big is that garage? What is, what is that garage? It's an old shop. He did a lot of fabricating and welding and uh, metal fabricating and stuff like that. And, um, did a lot of work on stuff for Calhouns. Did a lot of work on stuff for Thames, I guess. Um, it's a beautiful old garage. It's right, still right full of big drill presses and okay. uh, metal working equipment and stuff like that. Will the new lot line adjustment um, make that building in compliance with the setbacks? Yes. Yes. Yep. What What is that zone? Hmm? What is it zone? Uh, good question. Good question. I guess I, I guess I'm not. Quite sure. I mean, is, it, is it zone? Commercial or uh, I don't think lights. So, so, so anybody buying that property with that garage is strictly personal. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that's a you know they can't do a little home right there in front of it. They can't do a, they can't do a business. They can't do a business. I don't think so. All right. Now it's a special use for men. Look, that, that that have to be addressed based on <clears throat> what was proposed. There are home-based businesses allowed in town. I mean, yeah. you could see no, I, I any proposal, but... You know, I see this garage, and then I see the problem we had with uh, Pollock's property sure. with yep. the hamlet and yeah. so forth and so on. Uh, 
Um, and it was brought up in a conversation that you know, she wishes to sell this property. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, we, we needed setbacks and stuff. I guess the setbacks are all, all set. Yeah, they are. I mean, even, even in the most restrictive zone, the, the worst scale of this map is, he, he'll miss it. Okay, uh, does anybody have any questions on this? What I don't understand, Brian, is that if you look at the tax map overlay that we have on our computer, it already shows that line following the current national grid right away. Which, well, do you want to go by real surveys or do you want to go by tax map? <laughs> It's just, just it's showing us going up against that, and that's why it was so confusing. That was exactly what was going on. And I knew it would be, and that's why I did my color diagrams. That was well played. It's almost as if I was expecting that. Yeah, question. You no, were. Yeah. Not sure. Okay. Um, well, if there's no other questions, I think we can proceed forward with this. Uh, uh, I will uh, entertain a. Uh, Seeker determination on this. I'll make a motion for like that. I'll second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Now on the approval, um, is there any conditions that have to be put on that? Just that it be filed. Right. I, I'm going to presume you're going to file a map. Yep. A copy of the filed map we with the building the department. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll uh, entertain a motion to approve this. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're all set. Do you want your copies of this? You want me to collect these? You get yeah, stamp. If you could uh, collect and get me back four. Chuck, that would be fantastic. I think I have my own. Okay. Thank All you, right. Brian. Thank you very much, folks. Have a good night. Yep, you too. Good night, Brian. Okay, uh, next on our agenda is the Warrington uh, Waiver of Subdivision. And we received a, as you're coming up here, we received a new map that showed the septic system. And um, the only question I had, and this is for uh, Andy. I noticed that the septic system for the one property is right on the borderline, but this does not pertain to the waiver that we're currently talking about. Everything regarding the waiver, I believe, is okay. Right. Uh, it would be my opinion that uh, that's a separate compliance matter, yeah. uh, enforcement or compliance matter. Uh, we should just note on the record that in the event the board is inclined to approve the waiver, uh, that it's limited to just the waiver of subdivision, the lot line, lot line and you're not uh, opining as to any compliance regarding the sept existing septic location. Yeah, you, you understand what we... We have to do here. Uh, not what, but uh, we wanted the septic systems, and you put the septic systems for the, the two-story wood frame house there. But you also put the septic system, which you're, you're required to do, for the other lot, uh, for the one-story wood frame house, and that's right on the 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 uh, uh, boundary line of the two lots. Right. Probably in most cases, that would not satisfy uh, Department of Health. Uh, it's been that. there for you know God knows how many years. Well, the thing is, is if you if the property is sold, that's where you would run into the problem. Maybe you'd have to get a probably a waiver on it or something like that. But this does not pertain. That particular septic system does not pertain to what we're going to be doing down here. Right. So we're just going to make a note of that. That this is only pertaining to the uh, parcel that you're going to annex onto the property, and everything else satisfies that that parcel. Okay. Right? All right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, is there any questions on that from the board? No. 
Okay. So I will, we can proceed ahead. Uh, secret determination on this by anyway. I'll make a neck deck. Okay, make deck. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, is there any uh, further discussion? I don't know if this is germane to this. Well, I know it's not germane to this hotline. It's just got the septic tank issue. Where, where is the field, the septic field? Right here. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. That's where we are just, to, that does not pertain to. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, is there any other further questions on that? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, now on the approval of the waiver. Uh, with the duly it, it will note that it's not to be interpreted as an approval of the location of this existing septic system. That's a separate compliance issue that the only thing you'd be addressing is the proposed lot line adjustment. Okay. Do I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? You're all set. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, that concludes our agenda. Uh, is there any new business? Okay, we have old business. And that is the renewable Atlas Renewable. Um, Hi. And you're giving us a status report, I would assume. Yes, yes. Okay. And I know it's been a long night, so I will try to make it brief. Um, we're here mostly, I talked briefly to Mr. Bonesdale today about this. We're here uh, to try to get a, a sense from this board and then on Monday from the zoning board, any concerns that you have with the reliefs that we're gonna be asking for. We wanna make sure that the size of the field that we're showing is acceptable to move forward with what the clients need and what we need to uh, get started for the, the engineering design in regards to stormwater and all the other steps that we have to take to get to Mr. Bonesteel for review. Um, the size and release that we're looking for, uh, just as a summary, and I can bring up my map so you can see it just as a refresher, but along um, Oakwood Ave, we're not asking for any relief. It's a 100-foot setback uh, uh, requirement for the zone or for this use, and we are going to maintain that. The reliefs that we're going to be asking for from the zoning board are going to be for the above-ground connection, and then we're also going to be looking for, this is a 70-foot setback from uh, over here, it's Farrell Road, and then along the back, about 50 foot setback. So we're just trying to get a feel of any real opposition on that and the size of the field before we get forward with the, the requirements. The oh, yeah, she can absolutely. So those, uh, oh, yeah, thank you. Th th those are setback issues. They don't, and I, they don't pertain to the planning board. And I understand that. I'm just, that's why we're here. We're just letting you know that that's our next step to go to the zoning board and hopefully get an understanding from that, Mike. My understanding is that we probably will not get a decision from the Soviet board, but I'm really looking for the for the negative, any negative issues that they may have in regards to setbacks. For you, this is just a status update. We are gonna we're hopefully to get some direction in regards to that from Monday. And then I'm hoping to set up a, a meeting with Mr. Bonesdale and, and possibly Mr. Gilcrest in regards to the engineering portion of the technical review, which um, we're going through some sections, we'll go through the stormwater discussions and, and get started with that uh, back and forth. So really, as, as brief as this is, is really to just give you the status of what we're looking for for the, the money, Monday meeting with the zoning board. Okay, I, well, yeah, know, they've, a, they, a, they, they've handled these cost. setbacks before on these, uh, on these solar fields. Uh, you know, that's, that's their... Yeah, their, their, and I, I heard, I mean, I talked a little bit about this with um, Mr. Golden in regards to the above ground connection. That's usually not an issue. It's been granted in the past. And I know they have to go through that. And I realize we're still under the 3D review. So um, we'll be discussing that at the next agenda meeting. Really, it's just a, a status update on what we're looking for and, and hopefully some direction from the zoning board on Monday. Okay. Wayne, and I'm hoping to questions? have a meeting with Mr. Bonesdale shortly. Do you have any questions at this time or any I'm looking insights? for concerns or, or worries. Yeah. I know that yeah, we talked I have briefly. one question. Sure. And that, and that is, um, 
how that front property line was established along Oakwood Avenue, because I do know that that is a monumented right of way. Uh -huh. I just want to be sure that, that you not not kind of done it in a prescriptive way where you just say it's you know, 50 feet wide. It is actually a deeded right of way. Yeah. It used to be an old state road. Um, and that your surveyor actually took that into consideration. I believe that width of that right of way is like 80 feet. I'm sorry, you said 80 feet? 80. Okay. I'll verify. Just just something to bring to your attention. I don't I don't want you to get through ZBA and then you discover that you're actually closer than you think. Right. Yeah. Is there any other concerns you guys have? Um, we're going to be working with, with Mr. Bone still on the technical and giving that to you shortly. Okay. Um, anyone on the board have any questions at this point? Andy, do you have any questions for us? <laughs> Or, or the applicant at this point? Uh, I don't have any questions for the board, oh, nor any questions for the applicant. I'm just going to note for the record that we've discussed this project, and it's a little bit of, if I can use the phrase, a catch-22, because the, the site is subject to a DEC brownfield cleanup agreement, but the remedial plan, to my knowledge, has not yet been finalized, and certainly the remediation has not occurred. Um, and as we've discussed, under the current seeker regulations, if you have a brownfield cleanup agreement with the remediation completed, a solar project on that property would be a, what's called a type two action, no further environmental impact review would be necessary. But that's not this application. We're kind of in, in between here, between the DEC uh, cleanup remedial plan for the brownfield and your review. And we've been working diligently on trying to, to work our way through the seeker review that the planning board and the zoning board would need to do on this because DEC is not undertaking any seeker review on the, on the brownfield program. Uh, Blaine and I have confirmed that with the applicant, with, with, with DEC, but you're still charged with doing seeker review. So Wayne will be meeting with the applicant's engineer to, to give you information that will be needed to make that seeker review. I mean, as you know, you, you have reviewed these large scale commercial solar projects before, and you're used to seeing things like view shed analysis and photo simulation and setbacks and stormwater and access. And these are standard components of your review, both under seeker as well as the project, but, but we don't have that quite yet because in part it's determining what DEC is going to approve for the remediation so that they can do the final design. It, it's it, that makes in my mind the, the review a, a little bit more, Difficult, not insurmountable, but difficult. And I think it'll be very helpful to, to Wayne meeting with uh, CT Mail's group on this and, and going through what's really going to be needed to help the board make that decision. It's kind of hard for the board at this point to give you, well, here's my comments on the setback because part of the consideration of that will be you shed issues. Okay. So um, it, it's, it's a little bit in between on this one, and I think a, a good next step is to have that technical right. meeting. Right, and we, we talked briefly about setting yeah. that up. Yeah, right. I, I, I yeah. think that's and, gonna be helpful. We're currently looking at the plans and coming up with um, comments on yes. what's been submitted. So yep. you should have that fairly soon. Okay. And then maybe that can prompt uh, uh, a more valuable discussion mm -hmm. on what needs to be done on the site plan. That sounds great. Yeah. And I look forward to that. And so, I, I'm, and so I'm, I have a, a, a better understanding. Um, I have an understanding of what, what you need to see to make any real decisions. And I understand that. What I'm trying to do is keep you apprised of all the information that we have as we're getting it. And know that the size of the field that we're looking for right here 
does require some reliefs in regards to the setbacks. And then that size is what we're basing our design on. So it's a, it's a little back and forth in regards to that, but I, I will be working with, with Mr. Bonesteel on that and uh, Bill and, and all the other people in regards to stormwater and engineering. And you're going before the zoning board on Monday, is that correct? Yeah, and it's, um, I'm sorry. Is that correct? It's Monday 21st. Yeah. Okay. All right. And it, uh, they'll probably do a public hearing. And they, they will so need now to. Now they're their... talking at public hearing at their July well, meeting. Well, that's, that's not yet determined because. The zoning board, like this board, will need to determine their applications complete Correct. Uh, in order to schedule a public hearing. So um, well, I'm hoping I, to get some direction on yeah. anything they would like I, to see at this meeting right. so we can get those things in. I, 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 what, I, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, uh, at what point uh, would you expect to come back to us? I, I, I don't know why you would want to come back on our next meeting. but uh, um, I think that we'll have the meeting with Wayne and have some discussion and we'll go through that and come up with a schedule based on that. All right. for the, for, I think that would probably be the best approach. Um, okay. With, okay. So we'll, we'll adjourn with no, no date at this point. Okay. Next and I'll be, in, I'll be in touch with you, Chuck, when we, we know. Right. But I, Could I just get a um, secret clarification and maybe you don't have one. If DEC does not, is not making a secret determination on a brownfield site, that they are asking for a remediation plan on, can we as a board make a secret determination without understanding their plan? I, I, I that's, you've hit the issue, okay? okay? And, and that's, that's the problem of we, we need to know, and, and from the applicant's perspective, they're trying to get a sense from the town as to what, might be acceptable in terms of a project because they're kind of working hand in hand with Correct. will this work at the end of the day when they complete the brownfield remediation yes. but you're right linda there's there's been no environmental review at dec on the brownfield cleanup program and but you do need to make a secret determination i, I come back to the point of until that remediation is completed under the brownfield program you're going to hear me say the board's got to consider this project as being performed on a class three hazardous waste site, because that's what its character remains. And that's how you're going to have to review the environmental impact information. And knowing that a, a brownfield remediation will be undertaken, but it's not completed. It's Wayne kind of struggled with that point as well. It's, yeah, I think I, I think it'll be a little bit easier once DEC approves what the actual activity at the site's going to be, which they have not done yet. Not right. what, we have not got we've gotten some initial right. recommendations, but not a decision. Right. What's the what's the guesstimate time frame for that? I think we met City Mail met with uh, DEC on the site Friday last week for another project, although it is uh, the same one owner, the same one owner is planning to do a portion of that parcel of traditional project. Which is not official, it's not official, but what DEC told us is that the public hearing has finished until Friday last week there were no comments, which is positive. Maybe these few few days has been additional comments, but since Friday last week there were no comments. They told us that they will come back to us in a couple of weeks with their comments on the remedial and the works. We are expecting some comments, of course. A realistic timeline would be that during July we satisfy their comments, and by end of July or early August we get approval for the remedial works. We will estimate next month. Thank you. So I mean, I think that the board has to consider um, what that remedial work is and how it impacts this application and how we review it. So you get you, you get what I'm saying. If, if 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 their recommendation is to put a foot of cover over the whole thing, 
you know, and it's approved by DEC and the work's not done yet, but it's been approved, then maybe we consider that in our review. Um, and then we have to decide how we handle that under Seeker and how we handle that under uh, how the rest of the project impacts that remedial site. Whether, whether you dig up, whether you put anything underground or whether you're poking holes in it or something. I mean, we all have to consider all those things based on what that approved remediation is. I mean, that's all heavily wooded, right? That whole area is heavily wooded. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of overgrowth and um, it's, definitely, it's definitely got overgrowth and trees on it, yes. So that'd be considered into the remediation portion as well, I, would, I assume. Well, they would have to, yeah. If they need to put a foot of cover over it, there has to be yes. the ability to get to the whole site. Yeah. So when this project was first floated, I mean, um, you had a maximum cap where it was a viable project for you. Do you still have that maximum height cap? Is it still 20 inches? Because that's what was told to me. If the cap is higher than 20 inches, higher, thicker than 20 inches, it's not a viable project to you anymore. So I was thinking about the maximum capacity to be connected to the site, to be connected to the national grid. I'm just aware about, about this one feet or 20 feet subject. Common? No, it's not from our side. Uh, Mr. Watson, Mr. Watson said that. Of course, there is a limit that if we have to install a certain amount of land, then this project is not viable. Sure. I'm not aware of us about that limit. Correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa. The comments from City Mail and the comments from an official from from DC is that most likely 90% of the land will be covered with one foot. That's our initial. Mm -hmm. We have prepared some drawings. It was not the intention to give these drawings today, to discuss these drawings today, but we want you to have an idea about what we will do with this site. Because there is a lot of concern about Grading, land movements. Okay, to, to be clear, we will not make land movements. We will cover the complete site with this one foot and we will adapt. And we produce some drawings showing how to adapt these ballasted foundations on top of the other foot. So the impact on the soil will be minimal. We will not be doing any drilling, any holes, and we will adapt the orography of this existing one. To, to, it would be a minimal. So the disturbance that will happen will just be what capping we have to do. So the disturbance of the solar panels and the insulation of those will be minimal because they're going to adapt to the terrain that's there and uh, have no drilling into it. But it's a brownfield site, so they want to they work and, with what's there. And the utility connections? No. You can spend a couple of minutes to explain to you. You'll be trenching for the conduit, won't you, Melissa? Well, Maybe. I think for going in down the road, okay. the entrance drive, if there's going to be a trench, it would potentially be there, but I'm not sure what the depth will be and what this is going to allow at this point. So if it, we have to do something else, we'll have to discuss that. Well, basically, our experience has always been with landfills and how they have a liner um, when we put solar panels on landfills what they do is they run all the cabling through troughs or cable trays on top on top of the ground yeah all right on top of the fill right because they, can, because they cannot penetrate a, a line on a landfill so they run everything over the ground um and then the power basically runs overhead and that's why you, they need it. Well, in conduit, but above ground uh, cable, uh, cable right. races. Yeah. And the reason it's in conduit is because the salt that's used in the manufacturing process of the cable sheathing, the farming could just use the sheathing wire, the wires. So. But, but it can be. <laughs> The first, the first page corresponds to the layout. There are some sections on this layout. 
which corresponds to all the pages. So yeah, you will see on the feature of this section, you will see the all about the drops that section, and you will see these uh, panels, and you will see the quiet version, the quiet version, from the tables, and how the structure will adapt to the to the line. Okay. Again, and we will not do this on one movement, we will expect the other photography, which makes from a safety point of view and much uh, easier and on the both We will not be building, we will not be doing some one movement, we will be kind of this. If you want, we have experience in other countries about, yes, adapting to the property, large projects, 100 megawatt project even. So if it's okay to do, we can provide pictures of how we have done this in other countries. There's, there are some countries that because of the high cost of the land movement or because of the mandate to respect, like in Italy, we have to respect the authority of the authority. So the bank we have to uh, land movements are private. So it's common that we have to adapt to the existing authority. Yeah, and tentatively, preliminarily, we're, we're looking at a one foot fill on a ballast system to follow the terrain. That's what we're looking at right now. It's not approved, it's not official right. from, from PSC, but all the conversations are moving in that direction, and most likely that will be the result. Because of the type of site it is, we, we have to limit what we're doing in regards to disturbance. We, the disturbance is going to be the remediation. But again, this meeting is really just to keep you guys apprised of it so that we can get any concerns that you have, anything else we're looking for. We are planning to meet with Mr. Bonesteel and work through more of the technical aspects of it, uh, the size of the field and what they're requiring. And, and different from what Chuck was saying for the minimum requirements, it's not the height of the panel or the fit, it's going to be the size of the field that they're looking for in regards to restrictions on the uh, viability of the site for them. And so the restrictions on your leaves is more important for us at the moment to make sure that we have the field size that we need. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Okay. I know it's been a long night, so I appreciate you guys' time. I really do. Thank you. Okay. And Thank we'll, you. Be, we'll definitely be in touch. So. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. So that concludes the whole business. Uh, one other thing. Um, the... Sharp Road subdivision. Uh, this board did approve that some time ago with certain conditions. The conditions included um, the extension of the Brunswick Consolidated Water District and the creation of a drainage district. Those were completed by the town board. But in connection with the those districts, there needed to be an intermunicipal agreement negotiated and finalized with North Greenbush. Uh, that took an, an extended period of time, but that was completed and both the town board in Brunswick and in North Greenbush did approve the intermunicipal agreement. It's been executed and it's been filed with the town. And so the plat is ready to be stamped and signed by the planning board. Conditions have been satisfied, um, but technically under the law, it took longer than the period of time when the plat can be legally stamped and signed. So one of the things for the board to consider, and I can con confirm on the record that the applicant did make good faith efforts uh, to satisfy those conditions within the time frame. I did represent the town on negotiating the intermissible agreement. Uh, I worked extensively with Bill Bradley on that. It just took an extended period of time. So one of the things for the board to consider in her old business is simply renewing the approval of the Sharp Road major subdivision under the same terms and conditions. There's been no change to the project, no change to the plat, and that would uh, allow the plat to be stamped and signed and then recorded in the county clerk's office. So that's the one last item of, of old business. Thank you, I uh, forgot about that. So all we really need is to- uh, uh, Update and renew your approval for tonight's date. In the form of a, of a motion. motion. Yeah. Uh, I'll make that motion. Do I? There's a second. Is there any Who's that, Don? Don. Yep. Is there any uh, further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Does that officially conclude?
our old business? Um, I did do some research on Harbor Creek. Yes. And there is a property at 303 Russell Street in Hadley, Mass. That may be similar to what we might be looking at that they built. I have a picture of it. I can send it to you guys, but it has a different, similar facade. I can just pass that down um, to what they're proposing, but the color scheme is a little bit different than what they had represented to us. <coughs> most all, most of the sites that I looked at in the area of New York State that are on Harbor Freight's website are in a strip mall. So their architecture is you know, It's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And it's, I, know I looked at one in Yeah, I don't see any reason why. The only the only comment I'll make on that is, Austin. according to the Austin. one gentleman that gave the presentation at our last meeting, he said that they had just recently changed their color scheme. Um, Maybe they could put it off. Correct. Yeah, it's like it has a white top and a gray bottom. Yeah. But the same, it's the same building shape with the windows in the front. Side I don't see why we can't uh, strongly suggest that we would prefer to have that uh, legally. Is that something that we can push? Harder? I'll just remind the board under the <coughs> PDD approval that the town board did give the planning board the authority to review architectural design that was not defined. I think that does give the board some ability to discuss with the applicant the building design, the facade, okay. arguably that includes the color. And I think that's an appropriate topic for discussion when they're they, back in front of the board. They are on our agenda for our next meeting. So uh, if you could, uh, Linda, if you could email that around to everybody, that would be good. And, uh, and if you can email it to me and I get it in a certain format, I'm happy to send it over to their project attorney to say, this is the type of building that seems to be an alternate for Harbor Freight, and maybe they can bring us some information on that building. That sounds good. The meeting. Okay. okay. So, like I said from uh, our last meeting, they are scheduled to be on our agenda for our next meeting on July 1st. And from the results of this meeting, um, I believe that. Uh, Lord Avenue properties, the Hannaford is also. So those are the only two items that I have. That's all I had as well. Uh, pending any new business that may come in. But uh, so that would be our, our tentative agenda for right now for our next meeting. Can, can I ask a question about Lord Avenue properties real quick? Um, if we're if we're not comfortable with their traffic study, can we hire somebody to do our own traffic study? You do have that ability. Uh, I mean, whether it's... <clears throat> through your existing planning board engineer through his office, um, or you, you do have the ability to retain consultants at the applicant's cost and have that reviewed. I'm gonna go through the traffic study a little, a little more detail, but I, I I have some serious concerns about traffic coming off North Lake Avenue turning out to Genesee. I mean, I, I see no reason why anybody's gonna go down to Hoosick Street, make the, the, the left down to that light at Hoosick and North Lake and sit in two lights when they can just simply go through Lord Avenue. I mean, I lived over there for 23 years and cut through there all the time. Yeah. That I, was before we even did a lot of development. I mean, it was, you know, when I was younger. Not, not to mention, you know, if they start talking about cutting, you know, blocking streets and so forth and so on, that affects them. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, they only have one way in and Yeah. Uh, so, um, I mean, it's just a thought, you know, I, I think that's a very sensitive issue and it might behoove us to have an independent. I, I will say I, it did, uh, I didn't realize how much traffic went back of Plum Blossom and over to Tucker. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think, yeah. Yeah, because you can pull out into that turning lane well, in the center and, and get out. You can, you can whip out there. I'm very, real yeah. concerned. I mean, I don't have sidewalks when you walk in the street. Yeah. Kids play on the street. Yeah. 
even to pick up takeout and go back down Tucker and go out there and Duncan and go back around and Green Grove is quicker than turning left on either side. Yeah, you know, it's it's a similar situation on the other side too. Uh, on the you know off of uh, Coolidge. Yeah. And and there. I've used uh, that cut through too. I mean, proud app. And I mean, people people <laughs> come right down to, right down to Tibbetts <laughs> Avenue. You missed a cut it's through there, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> right, come right up proud and go right around. But even if it takes you longer. At least for me, I'd rather drive than sit. Yeah. So a lot of people, you know, even if it's going to take a little longer to go through Lord Edmund, which I don't believe it, it, it is personally, you'd much rather be moving than sitting. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I feel like you know, we get very talk, frustrated on Music Street. I mean, we talked about you know reducing the speed. We talked about putting signs up, you know, local traffic only, all this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, weight limits, all kinds of stuff, uh, but. Um, you know, it, it, all those things are, are contingent on enforcement. You know right. what I mean? Right. Uh, how do you how do you enforce a local traffic only? I mean, pull them over and check their address on their driver's license or what? You know. So I mean, you know, it, 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 you can do so much, um, and then it's dependent on you know having a, a sheriff's department sit there every once in a while and check speed. And things like that, but one of the issues is, is is a real good point is there's no sidewalks. You know, and and they bring up a good point. At least on the other side, there is sidewalks on on uh, Coolidge and uh, and Mellon and, and a couple other streets that are high traffic areas. But Prout has no no sidewalks. Uh, but I would venture to say that Prout is probably wider than a couple of the most of the streets over there. I mean, they're they're probably only 16 feet wide, yeah. most of those streets. So, you know, they have some concerns, but... Um, Otsego has always been a, a cut-through road yeah. for years well, and years and well, years. The, the problem is, is uh, the, the light, the light is the issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, and now Hannaford is like a secondary problem, and, and they're stuck with the, the problem. I mean... I didn't see a lot of these people at the public hearing for the Leon project when they were talking about the light. They had to know that that light was going to impact their their side of the road, but you didn't see a lot of comments. It was all centered around the other side. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, you know, pointing a finger saying, you know, well, why are you coming here now? But I'm, I'm pointing out that uh, uh, they should have been a little bit more proactive when that light was proposed. Now they now that now the light's there. They're, they're, they're stuck with that traffic now. Even if even if Hannaford doesn't go there, they're gonna get stuck with that traffic going through there. Well if we go back to the original traffic study for the light, they're saying that it's going to actually improve the flow of traffic on Hoosick Street <laughs> because there'll be a delay that originally there was supposed to be a light there and they didn't build the light. And now they're going to put the light in and so that people won't there won't be so much backup there'll be there'll be queuing distance and, and gaps in the traffic what i see from the light outside my office is that works good until you get one tractor trailer that can't get off the light quick and then the light cycles and you get one tractor trailer and three cars well, signal timing is going to be huge through that corridor. You know, we got to make sure that all those well, they all lights are, are synced so that yeah. you know they're moving traffic. Yeah, along. like I could make it down Hoosick Street going to work without hitting a red light. If you catch them just right, yeah. Um, but you I can't of, make kind it of elab up. elaborate on the parameters no. that you're working no, with sir. here, or what? <laughs> just keep that secret. But, but, at five uh, in the morning, you can. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Green all right. the way down through. But coming, but coming home, you can't. I, you can't use the street coming home. It's just virtually. You have to. But I mean, it's virtually. It's a half hour ride from the bottom of uh, College City I, I Bridge don't think to Sequoia. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's. It may seem like an hour, but it's not an hour. No. It doesn't take you an hour to get through there. It takes, in in my opinion, it takes just as much time to go around the North Lake. It's just that, like you said, you're traveling and not moving. Yeah. It's a perception. 
But all those people in North Fort, they're, they're, they're going to go through Lord Avenue or Hannaford. I mean, why would you? Now, this, 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 all of this is, uh, we're still on the, on the clock, correct? Maybe we should. Uh, you can certainly entertain a motion to adjourn if yes. you desire. Why don't we? I'll uh, like that motion. Okay. Do I have a I'll second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. I thought he already turned it off. <laughs> Oops. What are your thoughts, Wayne, on doing an independent traffic study on our own?